Hi, this is Wu Anime. Welcome to the sixth part of the anime series, Farming Life in Another World. The wyvern attacks Hiraku's party by breathing fire, but Ru and Tia protect themselves with magic. The fire spreads into the fields, but the elves put it out quickly. Haraku is at a loss for what to do and how to stop the wyvern. He summons the almighty farming tool, which to his surprise, transforms into a spear. He hurls it at the wyvern, which creates a three-layer defense, but the spear pierces it and injures its wing. He then throws it again, this time piercing its body and killing it. Haraku worries whether encountering wyverns is common, but Ru replies that they are rare creatures. Haraku then wonders whether it was sent by someone, but Tia says that even if it was, the person would not have sent it alone since it is so precious. Haraku then believes it was simply a coincidence. He then questions whether they can eat it, which the girls say is a delicacy meat. Haraku prepares three meals using wyvern meat that all of the females appreciate. Ru asks Tia whether she could have stopped Hiraku's spear, but Tia realizes that the wyvern could not, thus she wouldn't have been able to either. Ru believes they are lucky to encounter the dogs first, rather than Haraku. The renowned generals of the demonic kingdom of Galgardo, learn of the death of a wyvern. Randon can't believe it, for any time one approaches their land, they must mobilize their whole armed force. According to Bezel, the wyvern was assaulted from the ground and slain in two strikes. Randon is concerned that they will be unable to defeat someone so strong. Bezel refers to them as the four generals, and they must address the problem before panic spreads. Randon then determines they should quit, but Bezel intervenes. At Gatekeeper Dragons, Blue Dragon Durem asks Gucci if he saw the fight, and Gucci confirms it. Durem wonders what would happen if he accepted the spear assault, and Gucci predicts that it would pierce him cleanly. Durem wonders what to do, and Gucci notes it would be foolish to attack. Haraku liked the wyvern meat, but something was lacking, so he decided to brew some wine. He guesses that wine exists in this world and decides to make it from grapes. The girls are excited, and they quickly harvest the grapes. Haraku then makes vat for the grapes and instructs the girls to stomp on them. The girls feel strange at first, but they figure it would be simpler if they had a rhythm. The elves then suggest a song from their village and start singing. They fill numerous barrels, and Haraku chooses to let the yeast on the grape skin ferment it. Haraku worries whether they prepared too much, but after hearing how quickly the females drank it, he wonders if they produced too little. Meanwhile, the god sees Haraku and wonders whether this is enough for him to forgive him, but the goddess of agriculture informs him it isn't since he punished an innocent soul and ended up sending him to the forest of death while attempting to rescue it. She is also upset because Hiraku's deity sculptures depict her as an elderly man. God attempts to explain that it isn't his fault, but she refuses to listen and punishes him by having him sit for 300 years. Haraku responds to Zabutin's signal, and he notices that the dogs and spiders have captured another female. Ru notices Flora, her younger sister. Flora tells them she heard an angel was pursuing her and followed her to the forest. Haraku advises her to remain there for a bit so she can relax. Flora agrees, but finds it strange that Haraku is Ru's husband. Ru says that he is the master of the Inferno Wolves and that he has also killed a wyvern. Haraku realizes Kuro is a wolf rather than a dog and wonder about the Inferno part. Kuro then exhales flames, which impresses Haraku. Ru and Tia are astonished he didn't recognize them, considering they are well-known creatures that have lived with him for a long time. Haraku cooks some food for Flora, who eats everything. Flora departs after a few days, but she returns to live there a month later, bringing her maids with her. Anne speaks on behalf of all the maids and informs Haraku that he is free to order them as he sees fit. Haraku notices that Flora has also brought two cows and is overjoyed because they may now produce butter and cheese. Tia notices that the vampires, elves, wolves, and spiders have all congregated in big groups, but she is alone. She informs Haraku she'll be gone for a bit and flies away. Tia returns soon and has brought her underlings. Three angels, several lizardmen, represented by Daga and a chicken. With the introduction of the maids, a race of ogres, all of the duties become much more efficient. Haraku finds that they don't prepare any difficult meals and decides to teach them all of his cooking techniques. That ends up interesting the ogres, who then start cooking. The three angels that Tia brought are instructed to patrol the forest. 
The lizard men are in charge of all the labor that requires strength outdoors, and thanks to them, their construction work is moving faster than before. Haraku makes Daga wear a scarf around his arm, as he isn't able to tell them apart. Haraku realizes that their numbers have increased a lot. Leah then comes and tells him that she brought all the elves she found in the forest. Haraku then sees another large group of elves, but notices that they are all female. He wonders about the male elves, and Leah explains that the men didn't survive. However, they intend to make many. Haraku is happy for them, but decides not to ask how they intend to do that. Several days later, Haraku calls all the representatives to talk with them and asks them how to name the village. Ru suggests they name it after Haraku, but Haraku doesn't like the sound of it. Anne suggests they name it after the forest, but hearing that the forest is called the Forest of Death, Haraku feels that's a scary name. Zabutin then points at the door, and as Haraku opens it, he sees the Great Tree and decides to name it the Great Tree Village. That evening, he announces the village name to everyone and explains they will be having a party to celebrate it. Everyone starts calling Haraku their mayor. Haraku states that they need to decide that later together, but the girls tell him that everyone is already calling him that. The village then celebrates by drinking the first batch of wine they made. That's it for now, see you on my next video.